Coppicing is kind of like this potential for perpetual harvest from trees and shrubs. And so the act of coppicing is based on the end product that you're looking for. Like what's the diameter of material that you need? That's gonna dictate your rotation, how long the interval is between harvests. But the idea that usually during dormancy, we can cut trees and shrubs, generally down at the base, and that disturbance initiates a sprouting response the following season. And then those, all those new sprouts are gonna grow and develop. Um, and depending on what size material you're gonna need, that again dictates the length of the rotation. It could be anywhere from annually to maybe as much as 20, 30 or more years, depending on the species, and we cut them again. And that process, it appears with a lot of species, can be practiced indefinitely. So we can continue to harvest from the same stump, and coppicing the term is a stool, a tree that's being managed for the sprouts. And we see this huge flush of growth that emerges because you've got a root system that might be five or 10 or 20 or 50 years old when you, when you do it. Pests and disease really aren't prevalent um, during the cold months. And so it's a less vulnerable time in that regard. With frozen ground, that's really an ideal time to be doing any kind of forestry logging work because the ground's just less prone to um, compaction. And so it also really aligns itself well with a seasonal lifestyle. Um, just having forestry work happening when we're not out there thinking about um, you know, weeding or watering or planting or you know, tending gardens um, is really nice. It's also just a lot easier to move around the plant when there's not so much herbaceous foliage in the way. Um, and one other reason is because the highest concentration of nutrients in plants are in the leaves. And next it's in you know, the twigs and the bark. So when we remove biomass from a landscape, the least um, in terms of like the, the total kind of nutrient density of the material is in the wood itself. And so if we're waiting till after leaf fall, you know, all that leaf litter has been returned to the landscape. The worst time of year would be to cut things when it's hottest and driest, so July and August. Gives a very short window of time before the frosty weather of this time of year starts to emerge. And that's really hard on those young tender sprouts. And so we're giving it the full growing season for the new shoots to develop and harden off um, before they get hit. Now all this kind of gets tossed out the window when we're starting to talk about things like tree hay or fodder for livestock, which I know some people brought in as an interest. Um, because what you're trying to grow are leaves, you're trying to harvest leaves. And so we're gonna need to cut those when the tree's in leaf. And that's often gonna mean those months, like July, August. Um, in that regard, we're gonna wanna give the trees several years between harvest, just to kind of rebound. It's really important that a coppice stool has a lot of sunlight access. So, you know, cutting one tree in the middle of the woods will probably not result in very good sprouting. The traditional approach when it was more of a patch scale forestry, it still is, patch scale endeavor, is to, to basically clear cut between a half acre to a couple acres per year. And the reason for that is because you want to make sure that, that that area gets flooded with sunlight um, in order to you know, generate really healthy, robust sprouting. Um, and so you don't have to you know, do this in sort of that patch scale approach. It can be an individual tree, but you really want to make sure that it gets good sunlight in order to, to sprout well. So if you're starting to get into, you know, 8, 10, 12 inch diameter trees, depending on the species, they probably will still sprout, but I don't know that that's going to be necessarily the best approach for managing your landscape. Ideally, initiating coppicing when things are in the like kind of 2 to 8 inch diameter range, I'd say, is going to be better in many cases.